the Rano. We're, this is the original one. We're trying to rebuild it. We've got the bottom all set. This is all good. We're very happy. Yeah, I'm actually really happy. Um, I need to do exactly the same to this top axle, but that means I need to tip the whole machine. I need to lift it up, tip it on its back, and then do the same thing with leveling it, centering it, and then make a new kind of jig or something. I'll probably use these two points now to make a bar that screws in there, fits through there, my little brass bush, all the way up. And then I might even be able to use a lot of the same components from the original jig, just kind of modified a little bit, just to make sure that that goes up and, well, up and straight in, basically. Um, but I need to lift up the ranola and get it tipped up and lower it back down and get it on its back. How on earth am I gonna do that in here? Unfortunately, I don't have an overhead gantry system or a crane or anything like that. <laughs> so a forklift would be nice. It would be too easy though, wouldn't it? It'd be far too easy. So my solution to this and going forwards, I think it's a good solution. I quite like it. I have looked at getting gantries and things put in, but this is not my workshop. I rent it and that's boring. That's too easy. Come and have a look what I've got. This is the solution, a huge engine crane. Isn't it awesome? It's absolutely massive. It's made by Harvey Frost, who made a lot of the old sort of series Land Rovers that had the car recovery kind of winch on the back. They made all those sorts of things. You may have seen this peeping into the background of a few videos. It's been here for a while. When I got the green ranula that's inside with the red top wheel, the one that I've been using down the end, when I picked that up, the lovely guy that I got it from had a, had a field out the back with the most amazing old cars and trucks and a lifetime of unfinished projects and some things he's found over the years that have just deteriorated so badly. It was quite sad walking around the field with him because he was kind of like, oh, I used to, that was my first car, I used to drive that one. Look, the little Hillman Imp he had, it was beautiful. It was like, yeah, that was, that, I restored that and then parked it here and it just hasn't touched it and it's just completely deteriorated. It was a bit of an eye opener for me. Don't have too many projects. Don't, you know, spread myself too thin. But that being said, <laughs> look at me now. Got, bought his Ranola and I also got this from him. So this was in the field, rotting, just sat there for years, the poor thing. So whilst I had a truck and a crane and a hire and everything else at his place, I was like, you know what? Chuck that on as well. Because I straight away thought, when I saw it in the field, how tall it is, that is what I need to move these Ranolas. That is exactly what I need. It's on wheels. Hook it up from the front, lift it, Swing the bottom leg out, lower it down again. This should do everything I need. What a beautiful thing, I love it. I think it would have been used for like truck engines or something like that. It's absolutely massive. And the, the good thing about it, I'll bring it in the workshop in a second to show you, but the good thing about it is the, the sort of elbow, the pivot point, not the actual arm, the arm does that, but the actual pivot point does that as well. What I need to do with these Ranolas, this is, it's gonna be perfect. Problem is, I need to restore that first before I can actually use it to finish restoring that Ranola. It's a, I'm getting myself in a bit of a whirlwind here, but um, I'm not going to fully restore it. All I need to do is get the hydraulics working. And then I've got a friend, Glenn, at a hydraulic shop up the road. If I can get this off today, I'll go and see him tomorrow. And then he can work his magic on all of the hydraulics, make sure that's all nice and safe and working. First things first, I need to get it in the workshop, fire up the oxycetylene, try and heat up some of these bolts, to see if I can get it off, because it's been sitting in a field for at least 20 years. Okay, slight change of plan then. I've set this whole shot up, hoping to wheel this <laughs> crane around and in the workshop, I literally can't move it at all. So I guess I'm taking it apart outside. Big hammer, we're gonna need it. Right, so this is the main sort of oil tank lever to pump it up. I need to get this out. There's a hose that goes up to the actual hydraulic ram. And there's also these two hard lines that go up the side to the release. Twist that knob and it lowers it down. I can't even see the bolts, it's so... <laughs> this fitting is turning in the housing, which is brilliant, but the hard line is seized on to that fitting so i'm going to cut the hard lines to actually wind that fitting out it's no real loss because these hard lines oh i mean look at the state of it all they're going to be replaced anyway i'm going to have to use my oxycetylene i think to 
loosen up some of these bolts, which means I probably should clear away all of these dry leaves. I think dry leaves and open fire, not ideal. <laughs> Still got oil in it. Probably should have checked that first. Here we go, so I've got it out. Success, the first piece removed. This is the release knob. So this is the bit that you twist. It holds the pressure until you wanna let the actual crane down, twist the knob and it just lets the fluid through, which then in turn lets the pressure off and so the actual machine, the crane will drop. I really hope I can clean this up and reuse it. Mainly because of this really nice a hand adjuster. Really hot. Goodness me. Alright, so I've been fighting with these bolt, four bolts that fix this main tank down to the housing, and it's loose. out of the way we can see in here a little bit more there's a bit more room and hopefully you can see so the ram is the next thing to come out that big thing all that it's held on with giant bolt through there and then down here there's these little brackets that I can't get to so I think I'm gonna come in here, these four, they are the next victims. That's all the pieces removed, so I need to just load them in the van. Let's go and see Glenn. Well, we've made it, we're in Sittingbourne. Phoenix contracts. Look, your hydraulic lifeline. Literally, they are our lifeline. Glenn has helped us out before on a couple of things for the repair shop, actually. You would have seen maybe recently the jack, the floor, like the mechanics floor jack that we did. Glenn sorted out all the seals, had them made actually for that, because it's another obscure old thing. If anyone can help us with this obscure old sort of pump jack and piston setup, Glenn is our man. Hopefully, it's not on the, the rod, but it's on the piston. Then you won't have to have a new rod, we might be able to polish it for you. Just polish that up. If it's piston operated, then it could be just a tube. Okay. Because it's single acting, you have two ways, you have displacement and you have piston. And we're not sure yet until you get in there. Sure. If it's displacement, then it has to be a new rod. Ah. Uh. If it's piston, then it might be a new tube. So. Just, just, just your hand pump. And yeah, it's, it's stuck. I've not yeah. even tried. I just thought yeah. I'd leave it with you for yeah. all of this. So I was just. But what like, we we'll do? We we'll throw all the bits up. That's just your feet and everything. We'll that's up to the release, you know. which is there. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah. And then you should have a the hose will run around and connect on there. 
to there. That's it. That hose, the yeah. end of that one goes to there. Yeah. Yeah. And then this is in and out, and then up yeah. to the release. Yeah, it's quite an old one, isn't it? It's very old, yeah. Yeah. Oh, I've literally just got the same lathe. Is that a Triumph? Yeah. yeah. I've That's just got exactly the same one. Oh, I love it. <laughs> that is, I've never seen a lathe that big. Do you use the full length sometimes, I suppose? We've only got four meters so far, but it's there, we've got the capability. Of course, so we could do a... Yeah, so we could do a lot. Wow. Of that is insane. It's like a giant version of a normal lathe, isn't it? So that's a radial, like a radial arm yeah, drill. Yeah, it goes up, down, and we can spin it, spins it around, out. and we can also move the arm in and out. So sometimes, when you've got awkward things to drill holes in, so that was spin. You don't see it so often nowadays, but it's a No, I've never seen one. Shirt. Yeah. Right on. See, what did I tell you? Glenn is the man. He's going to sort us out. Um, hopefully, he's going to get the hydraulics all apart this week and send me some pictures because I'm dying to see what's inside. Um, they're great. I have every faith that he's going to be able to help us out and get that thing working again, which is really, really good. I can confirm now it's all looking good. He can save it and he's going to save it. I've approved it all. He's going to do it. That's going to be interesting. But um, anyway, here, I've had a little shuffle around here. The Ranala that I'm sort of almost working on, the lower wheels, I've got, I've done it. Hang on, where is it? So I've got a pile now of lower wheels the inserts that get the keyway machined in, and then cradles. So I've machined up another one. Ready to go. So this one is gonna go on that machine. I need to sort out a pin, so I can actually pin it as the original one was. I'm not gonna weld this on. A lot of you noticed that on the jig that I just sort of welded it on. That's just because I don't have any pins that are the right size for this. So I need to get those ordered, and then, Oh, it's a bit of a tight fit, but there you go. I guess a tight fit is good. I'm so sorry to interrupt. So you may have noticed down at the bottom, near the thumbs up and the likes, there's now a new option. Uh, YouTube have introduced Super Thanks, which the channel has just become eligible for, which is exciting, it's really good. So if you are able to donate, through the super thanks option that would be amazing i don't have a patron or any other kind of way of getting funding you don't have to do it at all but if you do i just wanted to let you know any of the funds that come from that will all go straight back in to creating more content for you guys into the ranella project into all the things we're doing here the how-to videos whilst you're down there clicking on the super thanks you may as well just subscribe why not let's get back outside and get these wheels attached so i can get that crane in the workshop come on then Goodness for that. Wow, that does not look great. These are supposed to be, oh God, they're mangled. Wow. Not great. 
<laughs> wow, look at that. Goodness me. Not sure what I'm going to be able to do with that. Let's have a go. Here we go. And then this is all the bits that I've got so far from the wheels. So here's the front two axles. The front wheels are here. And they have to sit on the inside there between the axle and the actual inside of the wheel. It has these little sort of needle rollers. So just in the process of cleaning everything up to get it all looking nice and shiny. There is pitting, but this is it's, it should be fine. Once it's all greased up, we should be okay. Right, back outside, here we go. Trying to get the wheels back on as soon as I can, so I can actually get this crane in the workshop. Put plenty of grease inside. in I've got it I've had this crane for over a year maybe more it's been sitting outside and I've been sad every time I turn up and seeing it all rusty and getting bad out getting all rusty outside it's in the workshop yes okay so I've got the front two wheels reinstalled greased up back in place and spinning nicely that's rolling really nicely on the front two wheels the back casters not so great yeah, that, the internal, like the, the pivot sort of bearing block for the pivoting part is just a disaster. I've got them soaking in some acid to try and remove the rust. Hopefully that's going to do its job, but I couldn't wait. I've got the other one still attached to the actual frame. I just wanted to get into it. I wanted to get the crane inside so I can actually start now working on the kind of uppy down tippy mechanism because, oh, yep, yeah, you guessed it, all of that is completely seized up as well. Whilst the casters are soaking, I'm gonna try and get my head around this pivot mechanism. It's a little bit more complicated than you might first expect. This main sort of pivot point can actually, like the shoulder almost, can move up and down here, which is amazing. I think it's at its highest point at the moment, but all of that mechanism is seized up. So I'm dying to take all of this apart, have a look, try and free it up as best I can. So that whole sort of boom part should be pivoting there so the, the fact that there's no hydraulic ram in there now that should be just flat down uh yeah not great so we've got a seized up pivot point there seized up threaded part here this wheel should be the, the part the part that moves the shoulder up and down. Look at that, I love it. Plenty of work to do. 
I'm gonna get straight to it. I think it's best we don't talk about how I got the crane in this situation, um, but it, it, it was a lot more controlled than what it looks now. Uh, I had to tip it on its back to try and, <laughs> it, it, it was a, a little bit precarious, slightly dangerous, definitely glad I did not film it because I'm sure a lot of you would not be very pleased with me, but I basically had to tip the crane on its back. The whole seized up mechanism with that, the moving shoulder joint with the threaded rod and the big wheel, that whole contraption as well as the top arm had to be fed out from the top, had to come up. And I don't have a crane taller than this crane. So I had to tip the whole thing on its back and then sort of like feed it out the end. So that is exactly what has happened here. Just don't ask how, but that's tipped on its back. And then now the whole crane part is out, which is great because now I can work on all of these components separately. That should flip back up on its wheels fairly straightforward. And we can try and get this part working. No! I've run out of oxygen. We've run out of gas. Damn it! There's nothing I can do. I can't even get any more today. No, all weekend. That's it. Okay, well, I'm sorry. I'm gonna have to end this video here. There is nothing else I can take apart without heat and I, I've run out of gas for the blowtorch. I'm sorry for the abrupt end to the video, but thank you so much for joining us. Um, we've made some good progress on this crane. Hopefully by the time there's another video, We'll have heard back from Glenn if it's good or bad news about the hydraulics. We might even have them back if, it's, if, it's, if they're able to be repaired. Um, I'll try and make some more headway. I cannot wait to get this crane working, honestly. Being able to have a huge crane like this in the workshop is gonna be a game changer for me. Loading things in and out of the van, lifting things around here, it's gonna be brilliant. Anyway, I'll see you next time. I will have more gas, we'll have more fire, and we'll get that thing working. See you next time. Hey, Dan, this is a test. Does this shot look any different to the others? Because I've got a little look. Oh, got a little fill light, haven't I? Does that make me look more beautiful? No.